was it like creating the Abraxian Cosmogram? Because the way that you've described it is as a terrifying experience. It definitely was. The Cosmogram was about a week long process where I was sleeping on a yoga mat beside my desk and I would get about five hours of sleep and it wasn't very good sleep where I could hear a voice that was giving me these instructions. I could never remember what the instructions were, but I could tell I was I was hearing or, you know, receiving some kind of information. And then I would wake up and I would play around with this image and I would change things, I would move things around, I'd add things. And then at the end of it, I start looking at this thing and there's all kinds of patterns that I didn't put there. And I'm still finding more of these all the time. Like uh, I talked about in one case, obviously the corners form a, a kind of tetramorph and those are the fixed signs of the zodiac. If you actually create a zodiac wheel using those, like by mapping those onto the fixed signs of the zodiac, then the nativity scene actually is on the line between Pisces and Aries, which is exactly when Christ was born, is at the border between the age of Aries and the age of Pisces. It's got the layout of the Temple of Solomon in it. It's got a pentagram that I didn't put there. It's got all kinds of weird things that were kind of created by accident. And this was a very destabilizing experience because you can't describe it to any, you can't explain to anyone what you're going through when things like this are happening. Because if you try and tell them about it, they just look at you like you're nuts. And so I think that was ultimately a big part of why I made the video, Contact 2020, because if I hadn't done that, I would have been isolated forever. I probably would have gone crazy. I started to approach something like insanity towards the end of that. And I only stabilized after other people watched the video and said that it made sense and that I was seeing something for real. If I hadn't done that, I, I, I don't know if I would have been okay. Yeah. Were you surprised by how many people resonated with that video? I remember one of the things that the angel said when I was given the instructions to make the video was the way has been prepared. And he had actually said that people would say that. Um, and he even made specific statements about who would say that and who I would get in touch with afterwards. And all of those statements were correct. That video got, I think it was like 8,000 views in three days, which is a lot for your first video. So I was very surprised and the, you know, like 80% of the comments were just thank you, which is on YouTube, that's kind of unheard of. So yeah, it was definitely a shock. I remember I posted it and I think I went offline for like three days. I just wouldn't even look at it because I didn't want to make it. And then I went back online and there was this overflowing of thank yous and gratitude and people saying that they resonated with it, which definitely took me by surprise. I was yeah. expecting it to be like this awkward, uncomfortable experience that I would be glad that I had done, but that would have been not a pleasant memory. That's definitely not what happened. The reason that I depict God in the Cosmogram is a, a shining void above Abraxas. And the reason is because I don't think you can capture God in a logical framework. The way that I tend to frame it to people is the logical frameworks, it's almost like looking at things with one eye. And what you have to do to see God is have multiple rational frameworks and then the contradictions between them, or the dissonance between them, will actually reveal a, a deeper landscape to you. God is, is the source of all creation, I would say. And that's, that's definitely as much as I can say with language. That, yeah, that's fair.